what type of tracks get the most bang for your buck, so to speak? Looking at time spent creating, which seem to be uh, which seem to be most lucrative: vocals versus instrumentals, minimal versus a, or a full orchestra, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say, Scott, the first thing, and for everybody watching, the genre and the type of track that you should spend the most time on is the one that you are the strongest at. That's really your focus. That's really where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Because I can tell you, and I want to have these guys chime in too, but I've had incredible. Uh, royalties and huge placements for very simple tracks like minimal simple rock tracks i've gotten some incredible stuff i've also gotten paid fairly well for orchestral stuff but same for vice versa like i've had small placements and small royalties for orchestral i've had small ones for rock so i would say um in terms of more most bang for your buck you guys know that i've always talked about having probably mid to up tempo tracks is more than likely what you're going to see uh requested and placed in tv shows movies and commercials there are obviously ballads and slower dreamy songs but if you watch tv and you watch these kind of shows you'll find that there's not a lot of them you'll see the vast majority of stuff that gets placed is more in that up tempo stuff so whatever genre you're going in i do think that that's one of those kind of golden rules to just strive towards especially if this want if you want this to be full-time income if you want to just you know get a placement here and there just stay true to what you love maybe it's slow ballad dreamy songs and just put out an album of that and you'll get a couple of placements hopefully right but i know a lot of you guys are in sync academy because you want to do this full time you want full time income you want a lot of placements so you kind of have to go where the odds are and where the energy is and the energy in this industry is in those high uh, um, high tempo mid to high tempo uh, kinds of tracks but definitely i would say it's not going to be very wise to say, um, well, let's say, Scott, you were great at like EDM tracks, but you think orchestral is where all the money is. So you basically abandoned what you love and what you really are good at. And you kind of jump into a brand new thing just because you think that's where the money's at. I think it's a very foolish thing to do. I think you should really just focus on what your love is, what your passion is, what you're great at, and what you really can see yourself doing for years and years and years uh, into the future. I don't think just chasing where the money is, where you perceive the money is, is actually wise. Because first of all, these guys can chime in too. I don't know if there's one sort of particular genre. Or maybe they, I don't even know if they've actually done studies on this. Maybe you guys know of like which genres get paid the most in terms of royalties and placements. I don't even know if they've done that study. That'd be really fascinating actually. Um, but I can tell you that I don't really necessarily see the industry that way. I see it more as, okay, what are my core strengths? What am I great at? What's my love, right? Where's my passion for music? And how does it meet the needs of the library that I'm working with? And basically their clients. That's really the needs who I'm meeting. So when you can find that, that's when you can kind of unleash, you know, your productivity into this industry and you can really do well. So, um, Trevor, I don't know if you have some more thoughts you want to give on that. Yeah. Um, every library has done a study on this and it's called their royalty checks. And what, well, Jeff flew by. Um, and what they do is they look at their royalty statements and go, what genres make us the most money in in the area that we are like through our sub publishers or through our own contacts or whatever and then we they just make more of that because that's where the money is so the best way to figure out what that study is is to just look at a library and look at what genres they go back to you know what genres do they have like a, a volume five of hip-hop beats or what genres do they do they like to make like most libraries still do all kinds of stuff but every library i think from when I look at them, either they're a niche library where they're only one thing, you know, they're only hip hop or they're only, you know, country, or they jump back to a thing that they know will make them money <clears throat> because of play. So what my recommendation for you would be is to take something, something that you love because you, you, chasing the money is a horrible idea. It's like trying, it's like being like, well, doctors and lawyers make a lot of money. I don't really like being a doctor or lawyer, but I'm just going to go do it because that's the most money. That's not a good idea because you're going to hate it and you're probably not going to even like, you're not going to try really hard. So in this, try and, you know, within your bounds of what you'd like to do, find libraries that need what you like to do and make money with what you like to do. And then, then uh, meet up them. So you meet up uh, where your music should go. And so then, then you're, you're kind of doing it yourself. You're going, okay, if, if you're a country guy, okay i'm i really like doing country i can kind of do country rock too so i've got these like little bit of, of uh diversity in my in my you know work and then i'm <clears throat> gonna go to a client or a library or somebody who makes money with that genre because there might be libraries that don't so that i would probably be your best bet so that way you kind of get have your cake and eat it too you get to make the music you want to make and then be with somebody who's going to make money with that music for you that's it how about you mike yeah, I would say that um, there's no formula to like, you know, it doesn't work like, okay, well, the more time I put into a track, the more money it's going to make. 
you know, and there's no like sort of sweet spot in the sense of like, well, okay, um, how little amount of effort can I put into something to get the most return? That doesn't really work, you know, in this way uh, for a number of reasons. So, you know, like, and, you know, one example is like, yeah, maybe you're good at doing minimal tracks, you know, maybe you can do a minimal track in like a few hours and stuff like that. But then when you deliver to a library or a client or something like that, let's say they have 30 rounds of revisions for you per track, you know, then, you know, that's not quick anymore, right? That's a lot of effort. So um, might get you a lot of placements, but then your bang for your buck, let's say, you know, might not have been as great. Likewise, if you're working with somebody that, um, you know, that you're, that you vibe with and you're, you're giving them, you know, a lot of like high quality stuff that they need that they can service their clients, you know, and it's coming easy for you because it's, it's what you love to do. And, you know, you love the relationship with that library or with that company, you know, you could probably knock something out like pretty quick and be like, Oh, that was effortless and whatever. And, you know, one of those tracks that you did that was so effortless to you might land, you know, like a $150,000 Super Bowl spot. You know, and you, there's no formula to say that like, OK, you know, you can't even if you get that right, you can't necessarily say, like, oh, I should do more of those so that I can I'll just be the Super Bowl guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like it, everything changes. And then, you know, so really, at the end of the day, it's more about your relationship with the people that you're working with, um, how much you trust them, how much they trust your music, you know, and what that vibe is. And um you know, because they're the ones that are going to, they're the ones that have the finger on the pulse of like, you know, what is needed right now, what their clients are needed, um, you know, need from them. And, you know, and they'll tell you like, hey, listen, we're getting a lot of hits with this. So, um, you know, and the better libraries will be able to tell like, oh, I see that you're really good at this. They may push you a little bit, you know, and, you know, one way or another to try to, to you know, try to get the most out of you but they'll see like oh you're great at this we need more of this and you know and this will work really well for you